Moses stretched out the rod that he had in his hand and the waters of the Red Sea began to part. And y'all can see Israel going across on dry land. Can you imagine what was going through their mind when they were looking and going across the river, the Red Sea, and then looking at the water standing still and they're not stumbling in the mud because God has dried the ground and they're going across on dry land. Sometimes God said, let me show you what I can do in your life. Is there anybody that, that want to see what God showed up can do? Is there anybody that believes not only can he make a way for you, but he can make a way out of no way? Is there anybody that believes that God can give you this, but he can give you this, and he can give you that? I wish I had a praying church in here. Shout glory! Shout glory to him. Y'all know the story of Israel. Look, God crossed on the other side. Miriam and the women grabbed the tambourines. They begin to praise God. They begin to rejoice in the God of their salvation. But it wasn't soon after that that Moses went up into the mountain. And now Israel is wondering where did he go? Which way did he go? Which way did he go? Is he coming back? He's not coming back. And now there seems to be a vacuum in leadership. And not everybody is trying to be in charge. And y'all know they began to participate in folly. But Moses came down and he admonished the people, you got to decide which side you're going to be on. And after God swallowed many of them up, those that still remain were still not satisfied in their heart. They were not fulfilled in their mind. But they were always either up or they were down. They were never on a stable plane of their faith in God. And these are individuals that saw what God could do. They saw the miracles of God. They saw the plagues in Egypt. They walked out of there with gold. They walked out of there with silver. They walked out of there with fine living and all of the spoils of Egypt. And nobody had to throw a blow. Nobody had to sling a spear. Nobody had to throw a sleeve. But God did it by his own hand. But still, it was not enough. They murmured and they complained. They murmured and complained. They complained and they murmured. Until God was getting ready to wipe them off the face of the earth. But Moses stood in the gap and said, Lord, spare your people. How many of y'all know that sometimes God will have a man that will stand in the gap for you. He'll have a woman that will pray you through and you can't pray yourself through. Am I talking to somebody in here? Is there anybody that couldn't pray for yourself? You were so depressed that you couldn't even get out of our father. You were so down in the dumps until you couldn't even concentrate. But I thank God for the songwriter that penned the word. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time to pray for me. And I'm so glad they prayed. They took the time to pray. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And that's what Israel had. They had a man of God that stood in the gap for them. But they drove that man halfway crazy. And God had to allow them because they wouldn't go into the promised land. They believed the report of 10 instead of believing the report of 2. And instead of going in and conquering the land and letting the promise of God become manifested in their life, they listened to the naysayers and wandered around in the wilderness for all of those years. But God told me to tell you that today is the day that you'll get ready to walk into the manifestation of God's ordained promise. We can look at where we are today. It's not my brainchild. It was not my vision. Mr. McMurray had it back in the 1980s. 
late 80s uh, and back in the 90s uh, when he said we're gonna have three regions uh, but when he broke up in the three regions uh, you had individuals uh, that usurped authority uh, and bishops had to reel it back in uh, because they did not understand uh, that your time is coming uh, but your time is not left uh, and when you look uh, at how this thing evolved uh, in his old age would have become the bishop. You would have thought that he'd been gone and other folk would have had a chance. But God kept him. He got sick, but God kept him. He went down, but God kept him. And let others die before him. Because our ways are not his ways. And our thoughts are not his thoughts. And the best they plan the nice and they don't mean nothing to go Because you might think it's your season And in your time But let me help you out It's gone That lifts up one And takes down another Promotion doesn't come From Bishop Ellis Or for the Bishop Ford But it comes from the Lord And if God said it's your time It don't matter Who's a bitch you
the water's party. That the ground got dry. And it wasn't that the ground got dry. That they were able to hurry up and get to the other side of the sea. But the Joshua generation, he said, You ain't got no rod. Joshua said, Well, Lord, how's it going to work? He said, When you bear the ark up, tell the priest that the Jordan is overflowing during this season. It is the season of harvest. The water is coming from everywhere. But he said, This slave, and in this season, you ain't going to wait for him to try up, but you're going to take your praise and you're going to step in the water. And when you step in the water, it's going to dry up. It's going to stand still. It's going to hold up like a heaver. And God told me to tell you that this is the Joshua generation. You wait for everything to add up before you step in. But somebody ought to get a leap of faith and say, I don't know how you go to it. Destiny. 